Welcome everyone to the BizHack Live Digital Marketing Masterclass Series uh, done in partnership uh, with Mayor Daniela Levine Cava and the office of the Miami Dade Mayor. Uh, my name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder and CEO of BizHack. And today I am thrilled uh, to introduce Abdul Mohammed, uh, who's going to be talking about brand love. This is the culmination of season three uh, of our most successful masterclass series yet. Uh, we talked in earlier weeks about thought leadership on LinkedIn, uh, Google My Business and Google Business Profile. And today we're going to talk about brand love. I'm also thrilled for the first time publicly to announce season four, which is coming up in March of 2022. It's all about them, how to build your business today uh, with the amazing Bruce Turkel, uh, brand seduction with the author Daryl Weber, and how to become a mindful marketer with Suzanne Jewell. The theme of season four is the top thought leaders in marketing, talking about branding and mindfulness in your marketing. And we're incredibly excited uh, to have these thought leaders uh, for small business marketing uh, to share with you in season four. Uh, today is one of the great thought leaders in this community, Abdul Mohammed. He's gonna be talking about brand love essentials, uh, how to win loyal customers for life. Um, in two weeks from today, we're going to be doing a showcase of small business digital marketing. If you are looking for a dose of inspiration, specific case studies of small businesses like you using micro budgets to find leads and sales online, this is going to be a great event for you. Um, all of you guys, by virtue of having signed up for today's masterclass, you're signed up for the digital marketing showcase and you're signed up for season four with our thought leaders in marketing so there's nothing you need to do if you're here and you signed up you're going to be part of the uh, registration list and automatically signed up for the master classes moving forward and um, we really hope you come uh, to this celebration uh, i can tell you every time we hold it i come away moved and excited and thrilled Again, uh, we are doing this uh, amazing effort in partnership with the mayor of Miami-Dade County. In fact, two weeks ago, she mentioned BizHack in her state of the county address and the more than 1,000 businesses like you that we have served through now three seasons of BizHack Live in partnership with the mayor. We also are partnered with South Florida PBS and the Health Channel and this amazing group of partners, including the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, ICABA, the Miami Foundation, the Miami Bayside Foundation, the South Florida Interactive Marketing Association, CIC, the AMA for South Florida, the Key Biscayne Chamber, the Cutler Bay Business Association, the Community Fund of North Miami-Dade, Creation Station, Florida State Minority Supplier Development Council, Axis Helps, Coconut Grove Chamber, the Miami-Dade Beacon Council, the Aventura Marketing Council, and the Coral Gables Chamber. And that list grows every day. If you are part of an organization in this community that serves small businesses, you should have your logo on this list. Part of the service that we wanna to provide to you is every single one of these organizations, you should Google, you should check them out. They are a resource for you. And so part of the reason that we want them to be part of our promotional partnerships and we wanna highlight them every time we do one of these is because these are additional resources, often free or inexpensive, that you can leverage to help grow your business. And that's what we're all about is creating. This storyteller, I'm a recovering journalist who is now turned into a digital marketer uh, and even more importantly, a coach uh, and an entrepreneur who's build, built a consulting company to help small businesses grow. We have had more than 800 companies go through our Digital Marketers Edge and LinkedIn Business Edge, our signature courses. And we have dozens of other companies, including one that Abdul and I partner on that we are consulting with to help them achieve their growth goals now and into the future. 
And it's incredible honor to be here today uh, to, to share this knowledge and our network of incredible um, partners and instructors uh, with you, uh, with Abdul Muhammad. You're gonna get a handout with key takeaways uh, from today's session. You'll be getting a link to our YouTube uh, channel. This recording will be on our YouTube channel within 24 hours. Uh, and you should subscribe to our YouTube channel to get let, let know about any other great digital marketing content now or in, in the future. You'll also get automatically registered, as I mentioned, to season four, as well as the digital marketing uh, showcase. And then any of you who are interested, we are two and a half weeks away from the start of our next seven week program, our signature course. And it looks like we may not have another one until the fall. So if you're looking to uh, get a real taste of BizHack's um, paid programming, now is the moment to apply. Uh, there still are a few scholarships left. Uh, you'll also get a 15 minute marketing consult with me. Um, at the end of today's session, uh, I will be doing a short info session for those of you who are interested in learning more uh, in case you did want to apply and become part uh, of the BizHack community. Um, and so finally, uh, without further ado, Abdul Mohammed uh, is gonna talk about Brand Love Essentials, how to win uh, loyal customers for life. This is his bio, you can read it. I'm gonna give you an intro from the heart. I have learned more from Abdul Muhammad about marketing and how to own a business than from any human being on earth. And I am so grateful to have you in my life and so thankful for your mentorship, your guidance and our partnership as a business. So thank you, Abdul, for teaching me, uh, you know, a very unhip dude uh, about the cutting edge of marketing. Um, and so without further ado, uh, my friend, my business partner, uh, the extraordinary thought leader, uh, the man who created um, digital marketing departments uh, in two, uh, uh, you know, helped build digital marketing departments, Zimmerman Advertising and RBB Communications, two of the most important and largest communications agencies in South Florida, a man who has incorporated mindfulness and mindful marketing into AR, VR, uh, metaverse, like everything cutting edge, but always with a, with a mind and a heart. Um, a man who has dedicated an incredible amount uh, of his life uh, to helping uh, others at the Quality of Life Center in Southwest Florida. And if I'm not mistaken, you're the son of a clergyman, uh, you're the son of an imam. Um, you know, it is an incredible honor to welcome you to the Masterclass Series and to give you the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dan, for that heartfelt, wow. I just wanna take a moment. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And this is really what it's all about, right? Just loving and really working. Dan and I have known each other and have become fast friends over the course of a decade now. And uh, it seems like an eternity. And I see him as my soul brother when we look at what true allyship growth and development is. And yes, we are a derivative of our business, but really it's an exchange of energy. It's an exchange of thoughts. It's an exchange of a movement that's not just about ourselves, but about the people in our companies that we serve. And most importantly, who the companies or brands are actually serving. And when we really bring that into the way that we approach and build our business, everything else the wealth comes it just comes uh you know all the marketing tricks and gimmicks and all of the things and the hacks it will never ever replace the love and the true relationships that you build in business like that that i have been blessed to build and establish over the years with dan and I, i'm so grateful for the community that bizhack has created that dan has visioned out for years and has just stuck to it and done all of the things that we look at as far as the growth derivatives are concerned people brand and technology and dan is just a great person and every person that he works with in his team and that he brings on as a partner also emulates that same greatness and that same heart-centered approach to the impact that they're seeking to have it's not just about the money it's also about having a great impact. And that was really the real reason why I started MDM Ventures in the end of 2019. 
And after years and years, as Dan mentioned, of working with big businesses and large corporations, it really was always a challenge to me. And it felt like there was something displaced around our advertising and our marketing. It was so slick willy and so, ugh, you know? And at the end of the day, it just felt disingenuous. And so I feel like in the pandemic, a lot of us has come to an awareness, an awakening of this emergence, right? We're at home and we're dealing with it. Companies and brands are caring more about the people who are working in the company, who actually are the brand. I want to take pause there. The people who are working in the company are the brand. And we'll spend millions of dollars, a lot of companies, on the marketing and the advertising and won't spend the dime on the health and the mental state and the heart of their own people. And so this is about really looking at how it's a new wage, it's a new era where people create the brand, people are the brand, and the technology allows us to scale and to touch many and really bring what all great marketing campaigns and all sales things need, which is just that heart-centered connection with individuals that you have built value, you have built value, you have built value for all those around you. And that's what we want to get at today. And before I break into that, I want to just take a pause because I want to thank all of you for being here today. I really want to thank first of utmost Dan, but his staff and his team who have been exceptional at organizing and the logistics and everything that they touch. It's like Dan was there, given that personal touch. And this is what it's about, that brand love really coming through in every touch point, not only with your customers, but with your partners that show up for you, right? And this is critical and important and oftentimes missed. And so I want to take pause and give a little gratitude for Dan, his team, and for all of you in the BizHack community for taking time out of your busy day, out of your crazy schedules, out of what all of you guys are up to. And I know it's great things and amazing things or else you wouldn't be here in order to seek that growth. I just wanna take pause and for us to just all take your right hand, place it over your heart and just take a deep breath and breathe in ah, a sense of gratitude gratitude for yourself for the love for you being here ah, and as you exhale just let out all of the uh, the stress all of the things that kind of ah, keep us occupied you know let all of that stagnant funky energy just go and really take a moment to honor yourself and what you chose to do right now in this moment, right? You all chose to show up at 1230 to gain something. So bring your awareness and your listening and your gratitude right now to yourself for choosing powerfully to be open and breathe in. Ah, and let out all of the funk and make sure that it's your choice to be here aware so that you don't miss anything whatever is on your mind before you chose to be here and after we're done is still going to be there so let's just let all that go and choose powerfully to be here in the present moment to receive whatever it is that's there for you in your business and inside yourself that will allow you to grow and this is critical because growth from a business happens only from the growth of the leaders and the individuals within that organization. And as healthy as your mind is and your heart is, is as healthy as your business will be. And that's why at MDM, we first start by breathing in. Ah, and let all that crap out. Woo, let it all out. Let it all out, right? Let all of that stress, let it all out. There's nothing there for you to just be present. And then you now have a space to create. You now have a space to create. You've cleared yourself, you're present. And I know this may be super basic, but this is something that we often miss. And by integrating this in, it allows all of us to have a space of clarity in our mind, it decreases stress. 
so that we're more powerful and effective when we're dealing with our business. So I just want to take 30 seconds for us to be present, to breathe in, let out, and create. And as you're breathing in, breathe in gratitude. Bring your, put your hand in your heart, feel the heart beating. You're a human being in here. Ah. 30 seconds at your own pace. Breathe in, feel it. Come on now. I want to make you all feel a little uncomfortable or those who are loving it. Love this, love this. This is how your business will thrive because your heart is alive. Ah, let all of that out and fill your heart with gratitude and hope for what you have and for where you are. Because from there, you can get anywhere. From there, you can grow. From there, you can be the brand that people love. From there, you can bring that love into your brand communication, into your brand experience, and into the way you implement technology into the way you implement technology. And so I don't wanna to take too much time because when you get that way, it powers you up. I hope you guys felt a little bit. Breath work is something that's powerful. You breathe that in, it calms you. We're talking about managing your sympathetic and your parasympathetic, your nervous system, which allows you to be able to function at a higher rate. And if you just took a few moments to breathe in, let out and create before meetings, before you deal with strategy and before you, you function, and create your marketing, you will see how that will open it up. So that's the biggest takeaway. And then we'll move on to that left brain stuff that everybody really wants to come in here, right? How do we now apply this sort of love and application in everything we do and how we show up as a brand? And that is critical. So I'll just take a pause, let you guys ponder on that while I get set up behind the scenes uh, and share my screen here give me one second you know while I'm doing this i just want to say thank you for that i actually uh want to specifically call out my personal gratitude to lilia posos who conceived of this biz hack live series almost two years ago and who has been the rock behind it ever since and so lilia i just want to publicly let you know how grateful i am and if everybody in the chat, if you're grateful for BizHack Live, if you're grateful for th these free webinars, if you're grateful for the context that brought the amazing Abdul, uh, let Lilia know how much you appreciate all the hard work she does behind the scenes. I get the good job. I get to show up two minutes before the start of this and be the host. Everything else is Lilia. And so I'm very grateful to you, Lilia, for conceiving of this and for doing this public service. Uh, so uh, with such a heart-led uh, and humble spirit. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you I so appreciate much for it. that. Thank you so much. So I will jump right in. I want to first start by letting you guys know, I don't like to just sit and talk, although I can do that. I would love for questions to come in. I'm here to be contribution and a resource. Um, there's a ton of things that we can talk about, but I want to make this most contribution for those of you who are on the call. And as I answer certain questions that you have, in context for your use case, it 100% will apply to others. So please feel free to jump in. You've got a dynamic team managing the questions and Lilia, Dan will let me know when things come in that we need to address and we'll go from there. So first, we wanna focus on the things that will never change. And this is why no matter what, if you build your business and root your business in people, brand and technology. This is why we have at MDM focused on those three areas. They will never change. You will always need people and who they are and how they show up will always be a direct reflection of how people engage with and see your brand and the technology that you apply in delivering your communication, whether it's for sales, marketing, enrollment, partner, etc., is always going to either gain efficiencies or allow you to collect data, information, and knowledge that will allow you to deliver better and more quality services through that technology. And so while there are a lot of other things to think about and talk about, at MDM, we focus 100% on growth and how we can leverage 
the people in your organization, the brand that you have, and the technology that would best suit the business model that you're seeking to learn and grow in. And so people do business with people. You hear, hear me say that all the time, that will never change. And so what this is about is how can you humanize your brand and make human impressions? And so humanizing the brand, as you guys saw right from the beginning, I'm taking ownership of breathing in, letting out, and create. There's no separation of how I live my life and how I show up in my business. When you can live authentically and you are business owners, business leaders, and you step in to your own self and taking that on, there are going to be people who will do business with you because they resonate with that energy and resonate with who they are, and they're going to be people who will not simply because they do not like and it's not who cares they're not going to be loyal customers and they're not going to be your customers anyway so get real with yourself take ownership of your strengths take ownership of where you shine and what makes you unique and distinct and let that be what leads you because that's what humanizes you never forget that and that's also something that no one else no competitor can ever take away from you so you automatically build in your brand this DNA that can never be duplicated and you can have a very, very difficult time competing against. Next thing we want to look at, how can we connect emotionally? Emotionally. And it's all about where people are right now. So right now, a lot of people are dealing with post-pandemic, pandemic, aftermath. This has like been going on, what, the when. So we all know. I'm not going to spend time talking about how that shows up for different people. And for your customers how that shows up may be different than how the pandemic and the impact has on my business. What's critical is for you as a brand to make sure that you listen for and reliably deliver what's most important currently with the emotions of what your customers are feeling. And before you get to the listening of your customers, you want to make sure that you're in the listening of your leadership and your team that is going to be executing on your behalf and make sure that you're hiring not only for skill set this is critical you're hiring not only for skill set and you're partnering not only for skill set but for also for their mindset and their heart set this is critical so not just your skill set blend that too and integrate that and that allows you to connect emotionally with your internal teams and with everyone you communicate and work with and think about your customers in the context of right now and so there are several things that have opened up in regards to the new state of the environment for businesses. You may have been in business delivering your product and service one way, but because of the new environment, you have to rethink that. That doesn't mean things are over. It means there's new opportunity. And when you look at that new opportunity from the context or the lens of your customer, what are they most painting mo most pained with right now what's the most challenging or difficult uh things that come up in their world in their day-to-day -day? and then what do they gain from working with you your product your service etc and by putting that into context of what's happening in the moment for each one of the individual audiences and when i say audiences meaning your customers your employees your vendors people who you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis in the context of what they're going on. How can you look at a commitment inside of your culture to be of service to all of those individuals who will make your company grow with exponential force? And then how do you infuse your DNA, your way of being, your culture, your love? How do you give them love? It's very, very difficult when you're giving love to your employees and your vendors and your customers and you're making money for there to be problems. You keep things in harmonious. And so really it's about ask, listen, serve, lead, and deliver. Ask, listen, serve, lead, and deliver. This starts within yourself. <laughs> this starts with yourself first. And how are you gonna serve your employees, your staff? How are you gonna lead your team? How are you going to drive business, your business unit, your department? How are you gonna manage if you haven't gotten clear with yourself? And then you're going to go bring that energy and bring that force in the way you manage and the way you communicate. So ask first, what do you need so that you're clear when you go then deal with your managers, deal with whoever you're dealing with, especially when it comes to how you're going to communicate your brand and try to market. 
So what can you do for your customers that allow you to listen better by using the technology? Allow there to be more touch points for you to listen and gather information. Is it social? Is it email? Are you sending out surveys on the regular? These are things that are critical. And so how can we help you get through this time right now as it relates to your employees? It's going to be different than how you can get through and help people with the pandemic that are your customers. And so by setting up intentional communication that allows all of the people that operate your business, starting with yourself, what you need to be happy, to be thriving, right? There's a direct correlation between productivity, right? And this is not foo-foo, spirituality, any kind of thing. This is science. This is physiology. There is a direct correlation with your productivity and you're happy and times have changed now. And it's clear in this pandemic that your butt doesn't need to be in the seat from this hour to this hour to be productive. In fact, it's, it's detrimental because it crushes your psyche in many ways. So how are we providing infrastructure for our employees who we rely on to make money with love so that they don't leave? I know a lot of you are struggling right now finding quality employees, right? Is it changed the dynamic? How are we dealing with this? How can we create a better place together? Together. People are tired of us against them. Black against white. Men against women. Right against left. We all know, we all know for years where that ends. And people are tired of pointing the finger. And it's about us right here, each and every one of us. How we show up in our day, how we show up in our work. And many of you are spending more time in your work than in your regular life, right? But we're not putting time into how we're dealing with those relationships in a heart and from a heart-centered way. And this is why you got the dynamic of people losing their mind in this time of dynamic. They don't feel like they have support from their businesses, their companies, the clients don't feel like they have support. And so how can we make valuable experiences from the communities that focus on what you can contribute during this time for everyone? Am I making sense here? I want people to drop some questions in. Let me know if you're feeling this. Let me know if anyone has a question about that. I want to kind of give pause and give some time if there any questions have come in that I should address before I jump on. We good? I think so. Awesome. So one of the things that we need to do is stop prioritizing clicks, right? This is like smoke screen and mirrors. We live in the, the, the day of the gram where verified and are this, this many followers and it allows us to be yanked and jerked by things that aren't real, by things that aren't coming from a place of good intent. And it's also something that's manipulated by technology. And think about prioritizing conversation, engagement, over clicks, over your follows. It's a new time and there's new expectations from social media. When you look at the influencers that are getting the greatest traction and that have the most positive engagements, when you look at who they are, they no longer are the ones that are out there talking about things that are grossly negative. And of course, there will always be sort of this balance going on, right? But where are you? Where is your responsibility as a business owner, as a brand? And as someone who is taking responsibility for the world around you, for the environment around you, your workplace, how you show up for your brand. So how do we think about how we can lean into social media, not to have this, oh, and I'm one who's, I'll raise my hand because I, I know all about social media, but I have this visceral reaction when I jump into the feed and it seems so negative and it's like, ah, oh, right? And so what can we do as a brand? We need to be in it. Regardless of whether we see that technology as positive or negative, we understand that, the con that our customers are consumed and they're spending hours and hours a day on there. So how do you mindfully inject yourself in this conversation in a positive way that connects with those that resonate with your brand identity and with your brand truth? That type of content allows you to drive conversations, to build community, and that allows your business to thrive. Even in challenging times, people who care about you and connect with you, they're there for you. And when you look at how you can go with an influencer instead of paying them for a one-off to make some money, you really get in the world of what motivates that influencer and what motivates that influencer's community so that you as a brand can stand with them 
and create stories that have a direct impact that everyone naturally wants to share. Because we all want to root for a winner. Who, who watched the Super Bowl? A whole bunch of people, right? So we're all about this. And there will always be this challenge against the things that I'm saying, this positive love energy, right? And the other side. That's like, F that fear and, ah, and all of that stuff. And I welcome it. We should all welcome that. But who are you? Who are you when you breathe in and you let out and you create? how you want to show up for your employees, your partners, your clients, your customers, and how you want your brand to be received over time. And so there's a lot of things we could get into right now, and I'm going to focus on three of the most powerful strategies that you can integrate into your current marketing mix. One is the knowledge broker, the community leader, and innovation and creation. And I'm going to take pause now with innovation and creation because this is exploding. Of course, in the world of, you know, blockchain and crypto and the metaverse and all of these things, NFTs, that's a huge, huge, huge opportunity for any business, especially businesses that actually are heart-centered businesses, businesses that value quality versus noise. This is important. Businesses that value real connections and engagements like the one Dan and I have over time versus noise and some cheap funnel and some gimmick that everyone else is doing that is just mass produced and copied to make someone else rich. How are we bringing the heart into that such that the impact we have affects the communities we serve? When you have an impact that affects the community that you claim to serve, they will continue to buy from you and buy from you for generations and generations because we are in it together. So how can your brand show that you're an ally? How can your brand show that you are a community leader in the community in which you want to make money on? Doesn't it make sense? This is not about spirituality or anything like that or right or wrong. It, it makes financial sense as a business owner. Look at where the money is rolling. Look at how people now are moving toward blockchain and NFT and taking ownership and being able to bypass the barriers that have been set in place for businesses to actually connect in a way that's meaningful for their customers. So innovation and creation is a huge opportunity, especially for small businesses, small businesses that are up to something in your community, small businesses that are up to something in communities that have been underserved that need huge huge support that you can make huge sums of money by supporting it and setting up what's called a sustainable way to do business through love and sustainability and thinking about the community putting them first and then integrating that into the way you do your brand as a knowledge broker you want to focus on data and how are we leveraging the technology to really understand data and how that integrates into your complete digital ecosystem. Leveraging that information and don't be afraid of technology, embrace technology, but don't let technology run you. As a brand, bring some heart-centered approach to the way you want your technology to communicate. You don't wanna blast everybody and annoy them because you, you know how to do e uh, email marketing and it's automated and it's dripped, right? Be in the world of your customer when you're delivering these technology marketing initiatives. Think about how you can educate, right? And then set up two layers. Give them something that's gonna empower your customers to make more money so that they have more money to spend to you, spend with you, and they see you as the place that gave them that resource. This stuff only makes sense. So how can you educate your customers? Because your business, no doubt, has data, insights, and information that your customer does not about their business, about what they're doing whether you're in B2B or B2C, this holds true, right? And so think about what kind of value and contribution is there and makes sense for them. And now, as people have more control over their time, I don't necessarily know if they have more time on their hands, that could be argued, but let's just say they have more control over the hand because of the decentralized office space and the impact of digital and what that has done for business. So we have the ability to actually control and block things out. 
which from a brand standpoint, when you connect to value and emotion, you have your customer who's now plugged in like every Friday night. I remember I'm old school. There's some shows I used to plug in every Friday night because you know it's there. The beautiful thing about it is like Dan is doing right now, even if you miss it, you have the ability to check it and watch it. And it becomes valuable content that you can use over and over again. And Netflix and other streaming places have set the model. But how do you create valuable content that you own, that your business owns, that not only you and your business own, but think about this. How can you create sponsored experiences that your customers are engaged in and creating with you so that it makes sense for both of you to go market that stuff to everyone else. Everyone struggles for content creation. It's one of the highest things that you most uh, expensive parts of a marketing campaign is coming up with quality content, but you've got all these amazing creators and artists that are out there that have not a lot of business acumen, but they're great creators and they're awesome and they're amazing, right? They're killing it. And they've got hundreds of real followers on TikTok and, or excuse me, hundreds of thousands of followers. And, and they're really brilliant at doing what they're doing. And with this whole new technology like NFTs and I'm going to drop a bomb, MATs, which everybody probably is familiar with NFTs, non-fungible tokens. If you're not, I won't take the time to do that. You can hit me up on IG for another uh, webinar specifically about that if you like. We're definitely focused at MDM on growth strategies using the blockchain and different cryptocurrencies and NFT technology, but more importantly, MATs, the future, mass adoption tokens, which brings down the barrier of technology from people that have to get your crypto wallet and this and that and all of the steps. Even a tech geek like myself, it took me like 30 days to figure out all of the different masks and wallets and you know this platform and get this currency and this marketplace to just get a daggone NFT from my friend. And so this is a huge barrier for most people. And so MATs, mass adoption tokens, makes that process a lot easier. And there's a whole lot of things as a small business and as a brand that you can think about when it comes to how to leverage technology currently and bring your love, your brand DNA and provide utility in this NFT. Everybody thinks it's like when, I remember when social media started, everyone thought, all I gotta do is set up a Facebook page, it's free and I'll make gobs of money. And that's how people are doing. I have friends that are hitting me up. Hey, I've got this picture that I drew when I was in college. Uh, I think it's cool. Should I make an NFT? You think I can make some money? Right, it's all about community. Build a community first and provide a quality utility with your NFTs. We're working on projects right now we invested with uh, Mind Development Mastery, MDM Ventures. We invested in entertainment and technology because of all of the innovation that you can ha that's available through blockchain and crypto technology. So how are you thinking about that in regard to your audience and your clients and your customers and utility and value that you can provide very easily by digitizing some of the content, value, and services that you provide in your business? and make it seamless and easy by tokenizing your brand in a way that makes sense. This is the future. And this, this allows you to provide that bond to them because there are a lot of organizations and communities that you may serve that don't have leadership in this space, but this space is going, we know where that's going, right? This is like when uh, I remember in, 1990, in 1998, when I started my web development company, back back then and the conversations i was having was hey you need to get a website and they were like why would i need a website i've got a business card and a brochure are you kidding me <laughs> this is like and then fast forward everything is sold online and everybody's this is kind of one of those inflection points from a business standpoint for all of you small businesses to get on board now educate yourself think about how you can apply these things to your own organization but most importantly how you can be a community leader and help serve those others that are there so we're looking at how you can pull together different content by listening first. Research your employees, those who are your biggest advocates, get in touch with them, ask them to create with you what sort of ideas are bubbling up from their community. You can use group chats and the different technology to allow that type of collaboration to take place and provide rich content that gives you authentic, engaging value content for your social media for your newsletters, for your website, 
And so it really allows you to think synergistically with how you go about your branding and your marketing so that you're positioning your company as an innovative leader in the community that is there and engaged from the heart. Really building valuable connections, not being played by optics, but building valuable connections where your customers think of you before they think of anyone else. How do we look at the content that we create in an appointment driven way? Meaning you set a regular time like Dan has done with BizHack. It's live, it's, it's a timely thing. You know when to tune in, the communication is there. It's there and available. And you publish this new content in a way that allows people to show up and to plan for that. And by doing this type of episodic content that supports your value proposition, right? What is the value that you're bringing to the table for your customers, for your, your employees? Because it's not just about marketing and talking and communicating with your, with your uh, clients and potential customers, but also about your employees. And how do you create content that will allow other people to see who are looking for jobs to get a sense of the energy that's in your place and space, but also provides value as they're climbing the career ladder. This is critical. And so I want to take pause. I'm looking at the time and I want to leave enough for us to take some, some questions and end with a little breathe in, let out and create and let you know that uh, I provide business growth strategies and focus on companies in health and wellness in the professional hospitality industry, business services, B2B. And we provide fractional C-suite services for chief growth officer, chief marketing officer, chief strategy officer, and chief digital officer. We're working on exciting projects in the NFT space. One is all about music and creating music that uplifts uh, and provides uh, direct access for Quality Life Center in order to provide youth in uh, hard communities like where I grew up in Harlem uh, that are underserved and to be able to provide us with access to uh, information, education, financial literacy, and skills development. So I encourage you all to take on living your life and bringing that into the brand with a little heart and building a humanized connection with all those that touch your brand. Thank you. Beautiful job, uh, Abdul. And uh, so far, we don't have any questions. There's a QA. and a uh, you know, there's a very active chat. Uh, and thank you guys for that. And I think Wendy LeBranch is your new favorite, uh, you know, uh, fangirl. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, put those in the Q&A and we'll take them uh, now. Uh, my question for you, Abdul, is, um, you know, we're living in really turbulent times. Um, you know, the politics of the country were ugly even before COVID, but I think what's happened is over the last two years, we've been really socially isolated. Um, and I think it's just exacerbated a lot of the, the challenges that we have. Uh, I will also say on a personal level that as a business owner, it's forced me to pivot my business twice. Uh, first from an in-person training to online and more recently from a primarily a training company to a consulting company with a training component. Uh, and I have noticed the frazzled nature of most business owners that I interact with. We, we are tired. We are exhausted. We are struggling. I mean, pivoting twice in 10 years is a lot. Pivoting twice in two years is overwhelming. And keeping up with uh, all of what is the past of digital marketing, SEO, email, social media, paid advertising, and then the future of digital marketing, which is metaverse and NFTs and mats, as you talk about. Um, how do you yourself keep up as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a man who has both worked for others and worked for himself um, with the social, cultural and technology changes, you know, people brand technology, as you say, and then how do you recommend or, or, or counsel these frazzled, overwhelmed business owners that you work with and consult with uh, for how to handle this and how to grow their business despite that? 
that's a great question. It's a great question, and and absolutely, um, part of the the biggest part of my business is is doing executive uh, coaching for business leaders, investors, and entrepreneurs, and that is the biggest challenge. And these are people who are extremely successful, have gobs of money, uh, are are doing amazing things, and are in the conversation that you're speaking about right now, where all of these social issues and what's going on is just draining. And so what, and this was something that for me, I was working literally over hundred hours a week at the agency. It was crazy. I'm making everybody money. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And we just started to get drained and resentful and just really deteriorating. And uh, at the end of the day, this is what has worked for me and what I would recommend for anyone. You really have to just take a step back and get clear with why are you doing all of this anyway? Like, really? And I know it may sound like a simple question, but when you really create a space for you to get clear in your heart with the why you're doing this, and at the end of the day, you know, I think for conscious business owners, uh, the business owners I like to work with and the people that I like to work with, it's it, at the end of the day, it's not just about the money. You're doing it for something greater than the money and greater than you. And when you step into that and it aligns with something that you really are passionate about and you happen to be really skillful at, you every day remind yourself of what that is. And like how I started this conversation, really just let all of the noise go and go into your heart and connect with the purpose, the reason why you're doing that, why you're here. And it's not anything that comes from a, a speech or a book, Tony Robbins or, you know, Grant Cardone ah, and all of these other things that have great relevant information, but without actually bringing that into a heart centered place where you're able to really discern what is noise and what's can, what's the truth. And then you make that a ritual that every day you ground yourself in the why. And then all of that other kind of stuff kind of falls away for you and make that a priority. You, you make yourself and your way of being a priority and root that in your passion and in your heart. And that allows you to bring that energy throughout everything you do through the day. And to me, that started with breath work. A lot of people, it's hard for them to get into this spirituality foo-foo place, but get into the science of it. Breathing just manipulates the gases in your blood, which manipulates how you respond and your anxiety and your depression levels and how you show up. And so just take a moment to understand that all of the things that are happening outside, nothing, nothing is more important than how you're managing and controlling what's going on here in the inside. And that starts by just settling in and getting clear on why this is important. And then letting that lead, the money's going to come. The money's going to come because when you're showing up and being contribution, people don't forget about you and you have value and they will continue to call you and you will continue to build. So continue to stay true. And that's what I would encourage everyone to do. And that's the second part that we can do is to, to make it a choice to take ownership of the world around us. The society is a reflection of who we are. And these businesses that are running things and that we are engaged in on a regular basis, whether it's a device or a software, it's, it's ran by human beings. And so we all can be a part of how to change that and reflect what it is that we want to see. You're, You're on mute. Then. Sorry, I was just too busy taking down your slides. <laughs> we have a motto <laughs> at BizHack, which is one size fits one. And we believe that marketing is like real estate. It's all about, you know, the specific location. It's all about the specifics of the business. You know, when it comes to marketing, there are a lot of different paths that you can take. And what's important is that that path fits you as the business owner. It has to fit you. One of the programs I went through is called the um, Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program. And there are five um, considerations for every growth opportunity. And number five, which I think is actually the most important, is fits you. 
There are a lot of paths to success. There are a lot of different ways in this vibrant economy of ours to make money. Um, if you are serving your customer and solving their problems, you will do fine. And there are a lot of different problems to solve, a lot of different customers to serve, and a lot of different paths to move forward. And so the work that Abdul is advocating for, which is really deep self-work, will not only make you more successful as a business owner, but also help you live through the natural ups and downs that business ownership requires. There are going to be years where you will lose money. There are going to be years where you will pay to be, to have the rights to be a business owner. <laughs> you know, talk about freedom. That's the, the flip side of freedom, right? Is that you, there are moments when you're scrambling to hit payroll. And if you are not doing work that fits you, and if you aren't doing the work that helps you figure out who you are, you're gonna fail. You're gonna give up. You're gonna go and work for someone else. That's gonna happen because you cannot sustain a fiction, a lie, something that's out of alignment with your essential self. And so I don't think mindful marketing, it's a little bit of a tautology. They're kind of the same, like you cannot market without mindfulness. And if you don't have mindful marketing, you are being inauthentic. And if you are being inauthentic, they'll sniff it out. There's nothing better than sniffing out inauthenticity and lack of transparency than social media. Awesome. And yeah. they can smell it a million miles away. I want to jump in because we have a, a question came in from, from uh, Kirk. Uh, do, you, do you agree that in a post-COVID world, collaboration has replaced competition? I've been seeing that as a first time entrepreneur. Um, that's a great question. And I definitely have been seeing that. And that is because that is that that has to be the way of the future, right? We already know and we've already seen what happens, not just at a micro level when it's just, you know, a one sum game and competition, competition at all costs. And ah, we know where that goes. Right. And so that's been proven already. And so if we want something different, something that actually is, and I'm going to say this, but more inclusion means more money. <laughs> it's like, and so the way that you get more inclusive is by being collaborative, not competitive. Competitive means someone's got to go. <laughs> so if you're already setting up a business paradigm for competition versus a business paradigm for collaboration, then in and of itself is destined for one thing. In a competition, you got one that wins. So how in the heck can that be sustainable? It doesn't even make business sense. And so why we have people who are sitting here doing ass backward business techniques that work in the times of barbarians when it was hungry power and we didn't understand our human connection and the fact that if we all rise, we all gain so much more. It's like now people are kind of getting aware of this. This level of consciousness is opening up. And for those business leaders who get it, they're running the blockchain and they're decentralizing it and they're empowering people who are in sub-Saharan Africa with the ability to take their creativity and make money from it and not be exploited and not be oppressed. And so, yeah, I do believe that, that to answer your question, that collaborative nature is 100% the future and it will create the uh, 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 change. Now, that doesn't mean that collaboration is without competition, right? There's nothing wrong with friendly competition. That's why you have great Super Bowls. <laughs> and then you get up, you dust each other off, and the whole game is better, right? And so we've got to really start to embrace that team dynamic in order to change the, uh, solve the problems that we all are, are, are dealing with. Every business is suffers when we all suffer, right? So this consciousness is why we're infusing mindfulness in business because that is, is our survival. We are businesses. And now when you do things like decentralizing and allowing businesses to be tokenized, we are now putting the power truly in the hands of the people. And that's what I'm most excited about because this we're set up as a democracy, but we all know it's a capitalist society. And so when you're able to finally allow people who have power, right, you can now buy Dan's company, you could support the people you love and not just the people who are in control. That's going to change everything. And then collaboration and love will start to be proven and show that you can make money 
and you can have a great impact on life. These things aren't mutually exclusive. And that is the way. Lightning round, baby. We got three really great questions. Laura Park, um, my question is, how do you find reputable, reasonably priced professionals who will actually return phone calls in the digital marketing arena? People don't want to talk to me. So I'm going to tell you right now, follow me on IG, hit me up, and I will talk to you. And I promise you, I'll put you in touch with whatever you need and get you someone to support you. How about that? Lo love it. Sir Deborah Wright says, I conduct a webinar once a week on finances. When you say publish an episode once a week to drive people to you, is that like sending out a one minute teaser to remind people? Absolutely. That's one strategy that may work, right? But in order to answer that question accurately, you have to think about who you serve and where they are connected to digitally. They may be more apt to be responded via text versus email. Who knows? They may be more apt to uh, respond to a live notification from IG to let them know. And, and you may have you have to first understand the dynamic of who you're serving and who you want to speak to. Right. And then based on that, you're going to decide how it is that you best communicate with them in order to get the best result. Love it. Um, Nadine Powell, I think, asked a great question. Uh, that, how do you find others who are of a similar You're breaking up a little bit. I'm sorry. Say that again. How do you find you broke up, Dan? How do you find others who are of a similar mindset and heart set that aligns with your value proposition? Herein lies my challenge. That's a beautiful question. And the challenge is your opportunity to grow and be an integrity for what you stand for. So I'm going to raise my hand. I'm part of your community. Do you get that? I'm part of your community. So if you are hearing that and feeling that, first, reach out. That's number one. And then take what it is that you're doing, right? And, and start to use the, the, the digital platforms that allow you to communicate that message, to amplify that message. Discord, for example, is a great place to start to build community. Right. And I recommend Discord because we also are moving towards this digital centric ecosystem, which is great to set up and build community for your NFTs, your MAT projects. And so I recommend Discord. It also is, gives you a little bit more privacy and control than some of the traditional ones like I won't say any big names, but Meta and, and some of the others. And so, you know, there are several uh, platforms out there. I don't want to just call out Discord and not give uh, love to others, but that was one that is, is uh, I, I recommend right now because it has a lot of different uses. It's fairly easy to use and allows you to build that community. But the, the second part of that answer is the first thing you have to do to build community is to get out there and start talking. You will find that there are far more people. When you start to vibrate that energy and you start to put that out there, you're going to see that the universe is full of others that are also vibrating that energy. So how you communicate it is essential because how you appeal to some person is going to be completely different than how Dan appeals or anyone else's. And all our job ever to do in the world is to stand in our unique way so that we appeal to the people that the universe and God wanted us to appeal to. And that's all you got to do. Abdul, I love that as an ending. And I'll just add this one thing. Um, you know, I used to be the news director of the local NPR station. And, you know, when I started in that role, I thought my job was to be a journalist, to tell journalistic stories about what was going on in our community. And I quickly realized that the kind of love and loyalty that people felt towards NPR and towards their local NPR station far outstripped anything I had ever experienced as a journalist at the Miami Herald, the Washington Post, even PBS. And I came to understand that my job as the local NPR station head of news was as a convener of community and that I did it through information. And so when you share your knowledge in a webinar, on a podcast, in a blog post, you are engaging in an act of creating community. When I share my dear friend and business partner, Abdul, with you, we are engaging in an act of community. And so 
for many, if not most of you on this call who run a B2B company or a consultancy or an agency, what you really are selling is knowledge. We live in a knowledge economy and that is the fundamental unit. Uh, knowledge is what allows a small business to become a big business and all the mentors and consultants along the way who help them get there. And my secret sauce, the, the secret to what BizHack Live is, to what BizHack is, is that we share high quality, relevant, timely content. And we do it with a generous spirit and with core values. And we attract our ideal customer and our partners and our instructors and the community of people we want naturally. And so to Abdul's point, get noisy. You have something important to say and get noisy. With that, I want to say thank you, Abdul, for an amazing, inspiring, uh, soul-stirring session. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for listening. Please feel free to hit me up on Instagram. Follow me. I will follow you back. Ask me questions there. It's the channel I'm trying to build right now, so help a brother out. Um, and, and it encourages me, actually, to start sharing all of the stuff I'm telling you guys to do. So keep it going. Let me know. And if this touched your heart, please reach out. Let me know. And we can connect and collaborate and what you're up to. Thank you all. Thank you. And you can find Abdul's Instagram in the chat. Um, I'm going to invite uh, you guys to stay and to learn a little bit more about our main community building platform, which is our paid digital marketing edge program. Uh, so with that, that marks an end to season three of the Masterclass series. Abdul, you rocked it. Uh, we're going to be starting season four in a month. Uh, in two weeks from today, we have uh, the uh, celebration of small businesses and the small business marketing showcase. Uh, and then we have Bruce Turkel, uh, Suzanne Jewell, uh, and Daryl Weber all talking about branding, marketing, uh, mindfulness, and brand seduction.